So, in a previous video, uh, we already proved Rosset's theorem. Okay. So, this theorem states that let C denote a simple closed contour and suppose that these two conditions are satisfied that the function fz and zz are analytic inside and on C. Number B is modulus of fz is strictly greater than modulus of zz at each point on the control. Okay. Then fz and fz plus zz have the same number of zeros counting multiplicities inside C. Okay. So this was Rosset's theorem and we have given some applications of this. Now we are going to uh, prove this theorem or rather we give an alternative proof of this theorem. All right. We already had one proof earlier. So let C be positively oriented. Okay. Let C be positively oriented. Without loss of generality we can take that. Now so we consider the function say phi t which is equal to 1 by twice pi i integration over um, c f prime of z plus t z f z plus t z z dz okay so you consider this integral now uh, we already had that this is nothing but what this is uh, because fz and zz are analytic okay fz and zz are analytic inside so fz plus so this is defined for t less than equal to um, 1 and greater than equal to 0 okay so in this interval we define this function so now fz plus t z z this is analytic and this is the derivative of the denominator function numerator is the derivative so this is nothing but what this is nothing but number of zeros of this function inside C. Okay, number of zeros inside C. By result, which we already proved. All right, because that is nothing but the change of argument of uh, this fz plus tzz. Okay, so this is nothing but what? Uh, change of argument of this delta C fz plus T Z Z. Okay. So this was this. So winding number. So that is nothing but uh, some uh, 1 by 2 s pi is already there. So this is something like um, n. n minus p. But in this case what? Uh, t of z. So because there are no poles, because this function is analytic everywhere inside on C, so therefore no poles, so therefore this will, this will be just number of zeros of f plus tz inside C. Okay, so that is the function. Now what we are going to show is that this function is well defined. When this function is well defined, this will be well defined when the numerator fz plus t of zz, t of zz is not equal to zero on C. Okay, so let us see what is this, what is this modulus. So this modulus by triangle inequality you will see that this is modulus of fz minus t because t is in between 0 and 1 so modulus of that is that and zz this modulus and whole modulus okay but on c we are already given so this is on c we are already given that on c modulus of fz is greater than modulus of zz so this one will be what greater than 0 this one will be greater than 0 okay so therefore your this one will be greater than 0 so therefore modulus of this is greater than 0 so this is so your fz plus t of zz is never equal to 0 for all z on c okay so therefore the function phi t is well defined okay. so that 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 is what we got that number one we got that your phi t is well defined phi t is well define okay then number two number two we will show that your phi t is what phi t is continuous we will show this continuous on this interval 
okay so we will show that phi t is continuous now because phi t is continuous and phi t is continuous on the interval 0 to 1 okay and what is the value of phi t phi t equal to number of zeros that means what number of zeros means what that can be just integers so therefore phi t is a continuous function which is an integer phi t is a continuous function continuous function and values are integers values are integers integers okay so you know that this is a real value function which is continuous and whose values are only integers okay so only integers then for t equal to 0 to 1 this is 0 this is 1 this, on this interval what what is given you phi t the graph of this is just like this only integers 1 2 maybe minus 1 okay etc only integers so therefore for all these values the values are just integers that means it can be uh, 1 2 and etc okay etc so therefore but it is given to be continuous so what do we have we must have that your phi t is constant phi t must be constant is it okay because phi t is continuous and the values are only integers because it cannot take uh, if this is a value this is a value so there are no values in between this non integers so therefore this is a but it is given to be continuous function so it must be what it must be same if it is continuous then it must be like this like this or like this like this okay so the value should be same so therefore phi t is continuous so phi t is continuous means what this implies that your phi 0 is equal to phi 1 because values are this is constant so phi 0 and phi 1 and that means what is phi 0 from the definition i see that phi 0 is this one c and t equal to 0 so it is f z f prime of z dz and that is equal to 1 by twice pi i what is the value of phi 1 this is over c f prime of z z prime of z and f z because t is 1 so it is g z and dz so that is equal to what this is number of zeros of f inside c and this is the number of zeros of f plus z inside c inside c okay so that is that is Roche's theorem so only we need to show that to show that to show that your phi t is continuous on 0 1 so we need to show that this is continuous if we can show that then we are done so that is Roche's theorem okay so in the next video i will do that